read from verse 1 to verse 7, 1 Samuel 24. Then also I want you to look for Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews 12 and verse 14. So let's do it again. 1 Samuel 24, we're reading 1 to 7. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Glory to God. Amen. Before we get into it, I wonder, I didn't set him up. I don't know if he did it. I don't want to embarrass him, but maybe I will. Uh, where is where is where is where is it? Abby, where is that picture? Is it on the on desktop or where? Huh? Okay, can you put it on for us, please? That put, oh, it's on. Oh, wow. Very good. There you go. Well done, son. And who did that? Is that Alicia? That's you. Well done, sis. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you know uh, what this animal behind me is. This animal behind me is called an ermine. An ermine. And it's a very interesting animal that lives uh, uh, in Northern Europe and Asia. And it's known for its, uh, as you can see, its white uh, uh, fur. And what's interesting about this animal, it, it instinctively, it protects this white fur from any soil, any dirt, anything. It's, it's something it just instinctively does. It doesn't like any soil or any uh, uh, dirt on it. And what happens is hunters uh, take advantage of this, this, this unique uh, 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 feature you could say in this animal because what they do when they want to when they want to when they want to catch an ermine they don't put out traps they don't do that at all they find where the ermine lives which is usually in a cleft on a rock or in an old tree uh, 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 in, 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 a, in a hollow part of the old tree and what they do is they take uh, 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 they, they begin to smear the outside of it and the inside of it with grime, with nastiness. They put it on the outside and they put it on the inside. Then they release their dogs to go and find Mr. or Mrs. Ermine or Ermine, how you want to pronounce it. And as soon as the Ermine sees the dogs, guess what? The Ermine runs to go home, right? No, there's no place safe like home. It begins to take off and run to get home. And as soon as it gets home and it sees the smear on the outside and the smear on the inside, he doesn't go in. He stays outside where he is eventually captured. And here is this animal tonight. Rather than dirty his white coat, coat you could say, he's trapped by the dogs. He's captured while you could say he's preserving his purity. For the ermine tonight, purity is more precious than life. Tonight, I want to preach a sermon I've simply called holiness tonight. Because let me tell you something tonight. Holiness needs to be more precious than life. Let's read our scripture tonight. First Samuel chapter 24. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 7. The Bible says, after Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told David is in the desert of uh, Engedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set out to look for David and his men near the crags uh, of the wild goats. He came to the sheep pens along the way, a cave was there. And Saul went in to relieve himself. David and his men were far back in the cave. The men said, This is the day the Lord spoke of uh, when he said, You when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands uh, for you deal uh, uh, for, for, for you to deal with uh, as you wish. Then David crept on notice and cut off a corner of the Saul's robe. Afterwards, David's conscience, uh, 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 afterwards, David was conscience stricken for having cut off a corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord forbid that I should do a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hands on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. Verse 7, then these words David sharply rebuked his men and did not allow them to attack Saul. And Saul left the cave and went his way. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, amen, and verse, So Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. One verse tonight, the Bible simply says this, pursue peace with all people. And holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Father, tonight we need you in this place. 
Father, we're asking for your grace and your mercy over our lives. Father, tonight we are asking you will speak, God, to us and we will not be the same again. Oh, God, you will cleanse us from sin. Oh, God, you would hide us behind the cross. Father, we are in desperate need of you in this place. God, we need changing. Father, we need to be more like you, oh, God. I'm asking you would meet with every man, every woman, God, myself included, oh, God. Father, to draw near, to draw closer. Father, to be more like you. Father, tonight we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise in Jesus' mighty name and all of God's people said uh, amen uh, and uh, amen i want to consider tonight i want us to look at personal holiness first of all tonight personal holiness in our text tonight two men are the focus uh, amen of our story the first one is david david is a sweet psalmist david is the greatest king uh, that israel has ever had but in this moment that we find David in our story, David is the man at the bottom. He's a fugitive. He has been rejected by society and rejected by King Saul. He's despised. Amen. He's a man, amen, who is at the bottom. But the second man tonight is Saul. Saul is the current king of Israel. And at this moment, he's the man on top. He's the king that has influence. He has power. He's respected by all. You can say death and life, amen, is at the tongue, amen, or the words of this man man but at the time the story is going to end we're going to find that David is going to be at the top and Saul is going to be at the bottom can I say to you right now church it doesn't matter where you are the issue is where you're going to be five six seven eight nine ten years from now tonight because tonight this is what the focus is because you can be doing great you could be winning them you could be at the top but if you don't listen to the word of God you're going to end up like Saul being the bottom tonight but also you could be like David today where you're at the bottom but tomorrow you end up at the top the bible tells us here is Saul Saul is in search of David he wants to kill David he gets intel that David is by the area of En and the bible says he takes 3,000 men for one man can you say overkill tonight he takes 3,000 men to look for one man. And the Bible says he goes to where uh, this one man is. He finds that there's a cave. Saul wants to relieve himself. He finds this cave. He goes in this cave. He has no idea that David and his men I mean, are in the back uh, of this cave. And you can imagine tonight, amen, this is an opportunity to take advantage of a situation. Because here is David. Everything would have said inside David, kill Saul. Everything would have said David, amen, deal with Saul. But the Bible says David. David goes to where Saul is, he gets there by him, he cuts off a little piece of his robe, and straight away David is convicted. Immediately, amen, David feels, I should not have done that. Now, I want you to think of me tonight, church. Everything externally in David said this is okay. Everything externally in David says this is right. But there was something inside of David that says this is wrong tonight. We looked at last week. We asked ourselves a question. Who has our heir? Here is David's circle. His circle, every man was saying, David, you need to kill Saul. You need to take this man out. His circle was saying, amen, you need to kill this man. He's trying to kill you. Even Lord Logic was speaking to David. Logic was saying, David, if you don't kill Saul, Saul is going to kill you. And man, there was an old bounty killer song that says, kill or be killed. And this would have been working. And man, in David's mind right now, also theologically tonight, I'm sure this would have been playing in David's mind because he would have looked at this and it would have looked like death, that God has delivered his enemy to him. He would have come into his mind and listen, didn't Samuel anoint me to be the next king of Israel? Didn't Samuel say, you are going to be the next king of Israel? Maybe this is God. God's appointment this is maybe this is God's time I believe it was April earlier this year a submarine uh, 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 was crushed uh, this happened in this uh, uh, Indonesia a submarine was crushed uh, killing all 53 uh, crew uh, 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 on board of this uh, uh, submarine we don't know up to now what happened or why this submarine was crushed uh, but there is something called a crush death and they say tonight uh, when the pressure on the outside is greater than the strength on the inside, the submarine is going to be crushed tonight. Church, there is something inside of David that is greater than what's outside of David tonight. Here it is tonight, amen. There was something working inside this man that dismissed society, that dismissed logic, that dismissed, amen, accommodating theology when all these things were speaking to him. And what was working inside of David, can I submit to you tonight, is personal holiness. 
We see this at work with Joseph when Mrs. Potiphar was trying to make moves towards him, always coming and saying, why do you lie with me? Lie with, lie with me. And in many people's mind, you know what? I might as well sleep with the boss's wife. This is how I could get promotion. This is how I can ease my life. This is how things can make better. But David, sorry, Joseph uh, 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 resisted uh, Mrs. Potiphar. We see this working also in Daniel's life when Daniel is taken and moved from Israel to Babylon. And the Bible tells us, here he is, he's chosen with some young men to feast and to eat around the king's table. And you can imagine in many people's mind when in Rome, do as the Romans do. There's nobody here to check me. There's nobody here to see how I'm living. There's nobody here to see what I'm doing. I can do what I want. But the Bible says Daniel and some of his friends, they resisted. They refused to eat from the king's table. Why? Because can I submit to you tonight? There was something on the inside far greater than the outside. Let me tell you right now tonight, when the pressure on the outside, what's going on outside of your life, what's going on around your life, what's going on in men surrounding you tonight, when the pressure on the outside is greater than the strength on the inside, you are going to crush. You are going to break tonight. That is why the Bible tells us that you and I have to be filled with the Spirit of God because nothing can crush, nothing can break the Spirit of God. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me. That he was in the world. Church, if God be for you, who can crush you tonight? Personal holiness. So let's consider holiness tonight. Because there are things we wrestle with in life. If we're honest tonight, it causes us to want to give up. There are things every single one of us in this place we wrestle with. And we just want to just throw in the towel. We wrestle with relationships. And interaction with others. And we can talk about the boss. We can talk about our colleagues. We can talk about our neighbors tonight. But can we talk tonight, church? It is usually those who are close to us. It is usually tonight our biological family. You know, I tell people tonight, you know what? When it comes to family, family are complicated. Listen, not just biological family, spiritual family. We wrestle with things tonight. I think tonight, amen, about parents, how sometimes, amen, we lose our tempo of our kids. I think tonight, amen, about spouses. Sometimes, amen, we say things you ought not to say. I can go on and on and on tonight, church. What's my point? We come to a place where we want to give up. In fact, we're saying, what is the point of me trying? I keep on trying to work this out, to make it happen, to make it better. And they keep on throwing it back in my face. You know what? What's the point? I'm done trying. But the other thing tonight is holiness. How many know tonight we ought to be living holy lives? And it's not like we haven't tried. The issue is we fall short. And when we fall short tonight, it's very easy tonight to feel defeated. It's very easy tonight to feel discouraged. And what makes matters worse is the nonsense that traffics through our minds sometimes. Am I the only one tonight that foolishness goes through my head sometimes? Am I the only one tonight that just madness and uncleanness and just funkiness just jumps in your head from time to time and tries to mess you up and you begin to look at yourself, I'm supposed to be living for God. I'm supposed to be a Christian. I'm supposed to be a man of God. And sometimes what's on the inside comes on the outside and is usually through our words. Tonight, can I encourage you from the word of God? The Bible says, don't give up. Don't give up on holiness tonight uh, because many times when it comes to holiness uh, we think tonight that holiness is for somebody else that you know what it's for brother so-and-so he's been saved for a long time he's such a godly person it's for sister so-and-so she's always praying she's always on fire it's for them oh it's for pastor oh it's for pastor's wife oh it's for ministers it's for them it's not for me that it surely cannot be for us in Hebrews 12, the Bible says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Tonight, God tells you tonight, if he, God tells you to do something tonight, I believe God will help you to do what he tells you to do. Listen, don't give up on people. The Bible says, pursue peace. Go after it. Pursue peace. But the emphasis on the writer tonight, from the writer of Hebrews, the emphasis is holiness. He says, listen, go off, try and make things right. But the issue is holiness tonight. Because listen to me tonight, church. Because what will help us in the hard times of life is to see God in the hard times of life. 
And tonight, if you are not living a holy life, you are not going to see God in the hard times of life. You are going to see the offenses. You are going to see the pettiness of people. You're going to see what the devil wants you to see. You're going to see all the things amen, that pull you down and all the things that mess with your mind. You're not going to see those things. But when you pursue holiness, you're going to see God in those things. Here is David tonight. I believe David lived out this principle. Here is a man, he sought peace with King Saul, but also holiness with God. But it was this holiness that stood out and caused him not just to be, but to see differently from everybody else. So what does it mean to be holy? Because tonight, when we talk about holiness tonight, we are talking about an expression of the character of the God that we serve. That word holy means to cut. That word holy means to separate. It means to be different. The biblical word is sanctification tonight. It means to be set apart. Isaiah 57, 15, he says these words, for thus says the high and lofty one, here it is, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. That God tonight is separate and distinct from all of his creation. God tonight, the creator, is separate and distinct from the creature. Isaiah also says in Isaiah 40, 25, he says, To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I, I be equal? Says the Holy One. It was a man called Thomas Charles that said these words. It is not just that God is holiness, but holiness is God. Tonight, we are not just talking about an attribute of God. Tonight, tonight, we are talking about, amen, who God is. Listen tonight, when he loves, he loves with a holy love. When he judges, he judges with holy judgment. When he, amen, brings a decision, his decisions are holy tonight. Everything God does is holy because God is holy tonight. This is who he is. So we may hate it and we say, what does this have to do with me? Everything. It has everything to do with every man and woman in this building here right now who claims the name of Christ. When I go somewhere new with my wife, I'm talking about to go and eat something. You know, you get the menu and because it's new, you don't know. You know, you read what's there. Obviously, it's chicken, it's beef, whatever's there. You read it. Anytime, she's going to try and dis dispute this, but she's wrong. Anytime I choose something, she always wants what I choose. People, all the men are saying, yeah. <laughs> See, babe, you can't argue about this. Wherever she's hiding. And then I choose something. You know, we are looking at that. Oh, I think I'm going to have that. Oh, I wanted that. Like, you can get it, but I want yours. I was. It's like, what's wrong with you? I'm going to buy you your own, but you want to eat my food. That don't make no do they, Guys, your wife do that too as well. You, 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 they want to eat your food. I'll buy you your own. Why do you want my food for? What's wrong with you? It's like, you can have your own plates. I want, I want to eat it from your plate. Uh -uh. What's wrong with you? I, I, up to now, I don't understand that. <laughs> she wants to eat the brother's food. Listen to me tonight. Holiness is desiring what God desires. I believe tonight when we desire, when we, when, when we don't desire what God desires... There should be something inside of every single one of us that says, I don't want to do this anymore. Because it is hurting my relationship with God. See, the truth is, if you don't judge this tonight, if you don't deal with this tonight, it's very easy to get used to it. It's very easy to begin to justify it. Church, listen tonight. If you and I are not careful tonight, we can be in a church where people have been saved for many years, but they are no longer living the lifestyle they used to live. And what they're doing now, they begin to justify it on the name of maturity or balance when the issue really is compromise. And it's a very dangerous thing. And on top of that, we can have young people who have lived relatively sheltered lives, but they've never had a radical conversion tonight. Tonight they are good kids tonight, but the problem is they are curious about the world. 
They are naive about sin. And the only thing that is keeping them is their parents when it should be a relationship with Jesus Christ. Holiness. Listen, we're talking about personal holiness. This is something tonight that can be measured. This is something, amen, that we can... My barber, his name is Steve. And when, when I when he cut my hair the other day, he was telling me a story that when he was in Jamaica, uh, he, was, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was some friends, he's lying down on the grass, nice hot day, and he was in school, he had, his, uh, he had his, you know, he's had his shirt on, he's lying on the grass, it's time to go back, and he's walking back with his friends, you know, the busing joke and laughing and messing around, etc. and so forth. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And, he's, you know, the guy, and, and his friend looks at Steve, and on Steve's chest, he had no idea that a scorpion had come and just curled itself and attached itself to the chest of Steve. So he said, hey, hey, Steve. So Steve looked through, ah! and he did that. And he said it was a good thing the scorpion was sleeping. He, but he said, the problem is, from that moment, he became sensitive to any little thing. The moment a little bit of wind, like, <laughs> Do anything, you know, like, this is, listen, and this was on a big scorpion, it's the small ones. You know, the small ones are the most deadly ones. They carry the most potent uh, uh, venom. So any little thing, he's jumping around like a madman tonight. Here is David tonight. Church, listen to me, David's conscience was jolted by something small. He wasn't watching pornography. He wasn't smoking weed. He wasn't cussing somebody down or gossiping tonight. The Bible says he cuts off a piece of cloth and straight away inside of this man, he says, what am I doing? This is wrong. Church, when everybody outside was saying no biggie, David was saying biggie over something small, over something you and I would have said is irrelevant. That is not, this is a non-issue. Uh, this doesn't matter at all. See, so this is something that is absent in the lives of so many of God's people. Especially when we're about to make a wrong turn or a wrong choice. When the alarm bell should be screaming at us. We carry on going down the wrong road. We carry on making the wrong choice. Let me tell you something tonight. It is so easy to climatize to sin. Listen, there's two sides to holiness. There's two sides to what the Bible calls sanctification that the Bible gives. Number one is positional sanctification tonight. And what it means tonight, it means that you are holy before God because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. That his sacrifice tonight brought us near God. His sacrifice tonight brought us close to God because before there was a there was a distance because of sin but because of the sacrifice of Christ now we are close to God now tonight I mean our position has now changed from distance to closeness our position has now changed from enemy to child of God Ephesians 2 13 says this but now in Christ Jesus you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Jesus that it is through Christ our position has changed. Positional sanctification. But the second one tonight, and I listen to me. If, if position sanctification was all it is, I'll rejoice. I'll, I'll like, I'm done. That's it. But the problem is there's something called progressive sanctification. Do you know we ought to be becoming more and more and more like Christ? Do you know we ought to be growing in God? That there'll be something wrong tonight. I mentioned this. If I was still the same guy many years ago who came to the church, tracks of bombs hanging down, boxes show, showing, stinking of weed. And I'm standing behind the pulpit, tracks are down, boxes are showing, stinking of weed. There's something wrong there. You see tonight, every single one of us who names Christ ought to be making progress. Progressive sanctification tonight. You see, I've come to realize something. If people are not growing tonight, if people are not where they need to be, especially after many years of being saved, can I submit to you tonight, nine out of 10 times, it is because of this area of holiness. 
And what I mean is they're not willing to give up certain things and grow in the image of Christ. Look more like Christ. Who remembers that song? Lord, I, I want to be more like you. Do we really want to be more like him? Are we progressing to be more like him? And the issue is these people, they hold on to roots of bitterness, anger, jealousy, pride, animosity, unforgiveness. Am I getting warm? See, this is the problem with church hoppers. You know what church hoppers is, don't you? We will hop from church to church to church to church. This is, this is the problem with them tonight. Because listen, church, we were made to grow, not made to hop. The Bible says iron sharpens what? Iron. That there is something of you that when it connects with me, we ought to make each other better tonight. And the reality when we're in the house of God and when we rob each other the wrong way, we ought to apologize, stay together and mature, not hop. We can have the attitude, I'll just stay at home and be a good person. You're fooling yourself. Or you can have an attitude of, you know, I'll just stay in church and remain carnal and you don't give up the things that are pulling you down. Again, you're fooling yourself. I want to close tonight and look at holiness matters. Why is this issue of holiness so important? I want to look at six things. Five things, sorry. Then we're going to pray. Why is this issue of holiness so important to God? And why should it be important to us? Number one tonight, God himself is holy. And he commands us to be holy. God himself is holy. And he commands us to be holy. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 48, the Lord Jesus says, Therefore you shall be perfect just as your father in heaven is. How many of you are perfect? Paul jumps on this in First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. He says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification or your holiness. Church, it's the will of God for crying out loud. It's not the suggestion of God. It's not the possibility. It's, it's the will of God that you and I are to be holy tonight. Holiness is not a suggestion tonight. Holiness tonight, amen, is not some option. It is a command. Number two tonight, holiness is proof of our salvation. Oh, Lord, help us. Let me say it again because somebody didn't hear me. Holiness is proof of our salvation. You know what? Genuine faith has genuine fruit. Have you ever looked at someone before? And I'm going to bring it close. Maybe somebody in church. Have you looked at someone before and thought to yourself, you know what? I don't know if they're saved. I know I have. Do you know why tonight? Because of lack of fruit. You will know a tree by the... Don't tell me you're orange, you're bare mangoes. Are you sure you... I don't know if they're saved. I don't know if they're right with God. This is what Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19. He says, nevertheless... The solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his. He doesn't stop there. He says, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. You know, Jesus said, Jesus, I know everyone who belongs to me. And if you belong to me tonight, he's saying those who belong to me, they are withdrawing from wrongfulness. They are withdrawing from wrongfulness of character. They are withdrawing from wrongfulness of life. And they are withdrawing from wrongfulness of action. They're backing away. They say, no, 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 me, you're done. Because I belong to Jesus now. Holiness is proof that you are saved. Number three tonight, holiness is the biblical way we show Christ we love him. 
Who remembers, I believe a couple of years ago, we did a Bible study on love languages. You know, acts of kindness, uh, 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 helps, and, 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 and words of encouragement. Do you know, Jesus' love language is holiness. You, 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 want, you, want, you, want, you, want, you want to show him you love him? You are to be holy tonight. Now we know tonight, the Bible says, if you love me, he says, keep my commandments. We know this. But he goes on and he says in John 14, 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and manifest myself in him. So that we need to understand holiness tonight is how we show God, listen, I love you. God, God doesn't get excited by, you know, I love you, you're holy, you're worthy, or, or any song. He doesn't get excited by that. Show me the holiness. Show me you obey me. Number four tonight, holiness is the most effective way of influencing an unsaved world. Oh, God, help us. Listen to me tonight. We all go through the same things. We like to go and pretend like I'm the only one dealing with this. I'm the only one. There's sin is dealing with what you're dealing with. Oh, I, I, I lost my parents. Join the queue. Oh, I've been fired. I know I'm going to feed my kids. Duh. My parents didn't treat me well. They messed with my mind. <laughs> you are not the only one, friend. Like that even sinners are dealing with what you are dealing with tonight. The issue on the floor tonight with God's people, our experience ought to be different. Let's go back to Hebrews 12. It says, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Let me explain to you what that means tonight. It means tonight the unsaved people are less likely to see the Lord if your testimony and my testimony is not what it ought to be. We tell people, you know, uh, don't worry, you're going to be okay, you're going to be fine, we're going to get through this, I don't know what's happening in the world, but it's fine, God's going to help us, and it's okay, it's fine, you know, and all of a sudden, oh, I'm going to die as well, oh, 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 oh. and the world's like, huh? But we it. Didn't you tell me it's fine, I don't have all the answers, but God's got this, it's fine, God's under control, you know, everything's going to be fine, so we're like, oh, oh, oh. Tell people, hey, listen, just love your wife, uh, take care of her. Uh, she's just the best thing to slice bread, and you're going to find something, hey, baby, all right. But is that, is that your wife? <laughs> they ain't going to listen now. You've lost them. You've listened to me, you've lost them. So, how you and I respond to the twist and turns of life speaks volume to a watching world. And make no mistake tonight, they're watching. Your neighbor, your work colleague, people you have no idea are watching you, are watching you. And how you and I respond and how you conduct yourself and how you live. Listen to me, it speaks volume. Because now you're going to go to them and say, I want to invite you to the past house in Tottenham. They obviously help you in the past house in Tottenham. Keep your flyer. Because I've been watching you. Listen, when we're living right, people are willing to listen to us. When we're living right, people are willing to hear our gospel. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. Peter writes, listen to what he says. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. He says, in the same way, you wives must accept the authority of your husbands. Even those who refuse to accept the good news, your godly lies will speak to them better than any words. 
they will be won to you by watching your pure and godly behavior. Paul speaks to saved wives. And he basically says to them, your holy living is what is going to influence your unsaved husband. That you just simply live for God. You just simply read your Bible. You just simply pray for him. You just simply come to the house of God. You just simply, amen, refuse to partake in unholiness. You just simply, amen, be a godly woman. And that is going to cut him down more than anything else. Lastly tonight, holiness is important. Because Christians have become impatient. I was thinking about this as I was finishing off this sermon. I was thinking about when I was a young man, young kid. And as a young kid, I thought I would instantly become a footballer. I thought I would instantly become a, a, a I would join the, the great British athletics team and go to the Olympics. Because hey, I could play football, right? Hey, I, I could run very fast. I could run very fast, right? But have I played for any premiership team? Have I played for any Sunday league team? Have I ran for any? Hey, mom, I was so sure this is going to happen and this is going to happen instantly. Listen, we live in a very instant generation. Instant coffee. Instant housing. Microwave, instant food, ping. Many times as God's people, we want instant blessings and experience without paying a price for them. Listen to me tonight, church. There is nothing instant or immediate about holiness. This is what frustrates us. Because we, we expect instant. You get saved being a walk on water. You even go try to go to a river. Surely I can. And you sink. We expect instant holiness tonight. Let me say something. Like holiness is a lifestyle that will take a lifetime. Remember that. It is a lifestyle that will basically take your life. I want to close with this. In Psalm 17, verse 14 and 15, David is speaking. And he says in verse 14, he says, with your hands from men, O oh Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasures, they are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions to their babes. And let me stop there. And let me tell you what David is saying tonight. David is saying, oh God, you give people a lot of things. You bless them with children. You bless them with stuff. You give them jobs. You give them positions. Uh, you allow them uh, to drive cars. You allow them to get promotion at work. Uh, you open doors. I mean, you hope them. You, you bless. You give them so much stuff that they're able to pass an inheritance down to their kids. And he says they are satisfied with these things. They're happy with these things. But David takes it up another level. Because in verse 15... He says, as for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I will be satisfied. Here it is. When I awake in your presence. Listen to what he says. He says, you see that, that, that man there? I ain't satisfied with that. I'm not satisfied with that car. I'm not satisfied with the job. I'm not satisfied with the wife. I'm not satisfied with the kids. Yeah, I'm not satisfied with the position. I'm not satisfied I mean, with uh, notoriety. I'm not, those things don't do nothing for me. He says, Lord, you know what's going to satisfy me? That when I wake up one day and I'm just like you. Just like you. That's what's going to, yeah. That's what's going to do it for me. Here's this Emma. Here's this, here's this creature tonight. That... You can capture me, you can entrap me, you, 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 can, you can do what you want for me because I refuse to let my purity, I refuse to let my holiness be gone because my holiness is more precious to me than life. What about you tonight? How do you feel about holiness tonight? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes tonight, amen. Every head bowed, every eyes closed.
tonight, maybe you're in this building and you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear tonight that God is a holy God. That word holy is the word hagios. It means different. Not everything is holy. There are many books in the world, but the Bible is the holy Bible. It is different from all other books. It's hagios. It's set apart. It belongs to God. And tonight, anything that doesn't belong to God tonight is not for him. He's made it very clear in his word that if you're not for me, you're against me. That if you're not working with me, you're working against me. And tonight, we serve a holy God tonight. He's separate from everything. He's separate from them all. Amen. And the one thing that is keeping God away from you is your sin. And tonight, if you would put your, if you would humble yourself and repent of your sins and turn from your sins and put your faith in Christ, you can come close. Not because you're a good person. You can come close because of the sacrifice Christ made for you on the cross. Your position from being an enemy can be changed to a position of a son or a daughter. Because of holiness. Because a holy God died for sinful men and women. So sinful women, men and women, can become like a holy God. And maybe you're here tonight and you haven't given your life to Jesus. And you want to be part of the family of God. You want your sins forgiven. You want to, you want, you want, you want, you want to become a holy person tonight, friend. I want to let you know right now, it doesn't happen by you helping an old lady across the street. It doesn't happen by you just knowing a few scriptures. It doesn't happen by you thinking you're a good person because none of us are good. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Friend, it begins by surrendering to Christ. And that's you tonight. You say, that's me. I want to surrender to Christ. I want to give my life to Christ. I want to begin to walk with Christ. I want to begin to become a holy man, a holy woman. I need forgiveness of sins. If that's you, friend, will you do one thing? Why don't you lift your hand up today? Lift it up and put it down. I want to pray with you tonight. Count it a privilege tonight. Lead you to Jesus. Come and slip your hand up and put it down. We will pray and God will save you and he'll forgive you. And you can come in and you can begin to be changed and cleansed and made new. Here is this little ermine. I refuse to soil myself. I refuse to be dirtied by these things. Because as far as it's concerned, my purity, my holiness is more important than my life. Quickly, anyone else in this place? Or you backslid, you're away from God. You want to recommit your life to Christ. God is speaking to you. Slip your hand up, put it down tonight. I want to pray with you tonight very quickly. Unsave the backslider. Lift it up high so we can see it tonight. We want to pray. We don't want to waste this time. This is important tonight. Hallelujah. Then I want to speak to the people of God tonight. 